Hey Twitter, hey YouTube. So I've been asked a, a couple times on some spaces um, about double checking the camera ranges because I'm really feeling like uh, Tesla, uh, FSD and AI team have extended the range of the B pillars beyond the stated 80 meters. So since I've got the camera set up here at this unprotected left and I've you know kind of been doing this, I'm gonna use a combination of some overhead footage and uh, the um, 360 camera in the screen here um, to hopefully just kind of sit here and watch cars as they approach and um, see how far we think perhaps they're just starting to show up. So I'm not going to be engaging FSD. I'm just going to kind of pop out here at the visibility limit as long as I can. And if a car pops up behind me, I'm just going to go around and do it again. So as these cars pop into the screen, um, and, and perhaps I should put a destination in there just so they turn blue uh, and, and just not engage it. But you see the, uh, the gray cars popping in and out at some good ranges. I'm going to put a destination there. Just see what happens with that. I'm not going to engage because I wanted to sit here instead of have it go. And I'll do the same for the right camera from the same position. Yeah, to make them blue, obviously I've got to engage it. We'll clip this out. And uh, once I get the uh, footage all put together, if you notice in this median, there's a bunch of trees. So it's pretty easy for me to come back around with a laser rangefinder. And I've got one here in my bag and I can just kind of show you here. Laser rangefinder. Um, it works pretty good. You know, I've measured it and double checked it with, uh, with manual paces. And, and I think that it's an accurate representation. All right. I'm going to go, uh, a few more here. Then I'm going to change my setup and check cars from the right. Got a good set of cars coming here. A few trucks included. Ooh. And one guy going really fast. Just to show you guys, man, everybody isn't going the speed limit here. It'd be great if I could estimate speed from overhead footage one day. Okay, that's probably pretty good for now. Let me uh, come right back. I'm gonna get another camera set up. We'll check cars from the right. All right, I'm coming back to the same intersection. I'm right behind a truck. I've kind of got a different camera angle. Um, we'll just kind of sit here as long as I can and we'll take a look um, from the right side and see what we see. Much better angle without the obstruction uh, as you can probably see from uh, the 360 camera here. But this is about where the creep limit is just to get the best perspective and The, uh, I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought watching this car across from me and keep an eye on everything around in front and behind of me. Uh, but a lot of cars approaching from the right right now and they're just starting to pop in on the screen. Not quite as many trees looking to the right to make measurements off of, but I do have those telephone poles and I could probably take some bearings off of those and make uh, some good assumptions.
Okay, I think that's pretty good. Um, I might end up doing a voiceover. We'll see how this goes. Maybe we got some data and we can take some good measurements. Okay, now time for the result. So what did we learn here today? Went out and drove, put the drone up, took some good shots, got it all synchronized up, and then I put those white boxes on the video that you watched the whole time. So those white boxes are the best I could approximate from looking at synchronized video of when the gray boxes, uh, the gray cars started showing up both to the right and to the left. And interestingly, the box to the right was much shorter or narrower than the box to the left. I think there's a little bit of a difference when you have uh, fewer objects in the image as to the range it can see them. If you go back and look at the video, if you, if you didn't notice it before, the number of cars in the frame sort of takes off the farthest ones that are possible. But if there's no cars coming, the very first gray pixels that show up are pretty far out there. Uh, and I think we got to give credit to Tesla that without a doubt, they have extended the range of these B-pillar cameras uh, quite significantly. Now, how they've done that, um, you know, they've taken out the image uh, signal processor uh, out of the mix. They are using this bag of points, which I'm not going to even try to explain here, but essentially they're using raw photons to detect uh, light reflections and put them all together for the neural networks to do perception. Um, and then they go from there and they have increased the range. Now on Tesla's website, it says they're 80 meter cameras. Um, but what did we find? So let's start on the right side. The right side, uh, and the way I measured this is I walked out to the median in the center of those boxes, so where the grass is, uh, and I took a laser rangefinder, um, and I'll show you a picture of it right here. Um, this uh, laser rangefinder is just something I bought off of Amazon. You press the little button, and it's, it seems to be pretty consistent. So I take multiple um, shots with it, and the numbers are within a meter. So I'm, I'm using rough, let's just say the precision is down to one or two meters with this uh, laser rangefinder. In the front edge, so the closest distance, looking to the right, the, uh, I'm looking down at my notes here, um, it was 120 meters. And the long distance was 150 meters, almost double to the back side of the stated range. Um, now let's go over to the left side. The left side had a much wider range, maybe because of the perceptions, uh, a little bit closer, I, who knows why. But when I measured the left side, from the center of the median, uh, it was 125 meters. So that's probably within the tolerance error to say that it's about the same as the other side. 120, 125 with the methodology I was using is pretty accurate. But to the back side, so the very first pixels I saw looking to the left, I was about 190 meters away. So that's over twice the stated range. So it's still not as far as the human eye can see. I mean, I, I'm certain that I'm seeing cars, maybe not with the resolution to know how fast they're going, at 800 to 1,000 meters on a long straightaway. Now granted, if you have a scenario where you have a curve, you don't have that much range, you wouldn't be able to see the cars coming. But in this situation, looking to the left, I can see, let's just say it's 800 meters uh, pretty straight. But I think this uh, was a good result. I know a lot of you were asking me to do this uh, because I had the equipment. Um, let's just say this is an amateur test. This is not scientific, but you know, I've got video from overhead. I've got the 360 camera. We got the resolution on the screen. And when the screen shows them, uh, I do want to say many of you will probably be thinking this when they show them on the screen is not necessarily when the car uses the information. And that is true, but we have no insight into when they display something on the screen versus when the neural networks are using it. We'll just have to assume for the purpose of this experiment, they are the same. Um, but no matter what, we determined that the camera range is definitely farther than 80 meters. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below, uh, share it with some friends. I think this is a great result. And oh, by the way, great job, Tesla AI and FSD team for accomplishing this engineering feat with a relatively inexpensive camera. I can't wait to see what hardware four cameras can possibly do when I get my hands on a hardware four car. Go Cybertruck. Have a great day, everybody.